Hello and welcome to Noah Zerbe's Model United Nations video series. In this video, the first of several in this series, I'll introduce you to the basic rules of procedure used at Model UN conferences. While this video series focuses on preparing students to be familiar with the rules of debate used at Model United Nations of the Far West, held every April in San Francisco, the basic concepts of parliamentary procedure are applicable to Model United Nations conferences more generally. Understanding and being able to use the rules of debate, often called parliamentary procedure, is a critical skill at any Model United Nations conference. It's the difference between watching the committee do its work from the sidelines and influencing the work and deliberations of the body. Each conference uses its own rules, but the basics of parliamentary procedure are the same regardless of the conference. In this video, we'll focus on developing an understanding of some of the key terminology used at Model United Nations conferences. Model UN has a language all its own, and understanding that language makes it easier to know what's going on. So let's start with some basic definitions and concepts you'll hear at Model United Nations conferences. The first, and perhaps the most important, is delegate. Put simply, that's you. Delegates represent countries in the committees debating topics assigned to the agenda. As a delegate, you're playing the role of an ambassador, chief of mission, or other representative of your country's permanent mission to the United Nations. As such, it's important that you stay in your role. Remember, it's not your position on the issue, but your country's position that matters. Next is the floor. This is the right to speak to the body. When the chair recognizes your turn to speak, they'll usually say that you have the floor. Having the floor means that you have the right to move to the front of the room, take the microphone, and address the body for a set amount of time. Next is placard. This is the piece of cardboard or paper that, your, that has your country's name printed on it. You'll raise your placard to vote or to be recognized by the chair to make a motion. The photo here, for example, shows the delegate from Tuvalu raising her placard in order to be recognized by the chair. Next up is decorum. You'll hear the chairs say this a lot at conference. Basically, it means order or behave yourselves. When you hear this, it's time to quiet down and listen. The speakers list is the next concept. At the start of each phase of debate, the chairs will open the speakers list, which is the list of speakers in the order that they'll speak to the committee. At some conferences, the speakers list is kept electronically, at others it's recorded on poster sheets at the front of the room by the chairs. In any case, it's important to get on the speakers list early, as at most conferences you'll not make it through the complete speakers list before moving on to the next phase of debate. And if you don't want to speak when your turn arrives, you can always move to the end of the list or yield your time to another delegate. The agenda. These are the topics you'll debate at conference. The agenda will vary by committee at conference, with each committee dealing with different agenda items. Most committees have three assigned topics for the conference, which come in a set order. At conference, you'll have the opportunity to reorder the agenda and to discuss the topics in a different priority. A caucus is a break in the formal procedures, usually speeches by delegates followed by questions and comments from other delegates. Caucusing permits delegates to break off from the formal proceedings and form into smaller groups to work on draft resolutions. Most conferences are split somewhere about 50-50 between formal session and caucusing. Finally, resolution. This is a tricky one, as the United Nations has different ways of referring to the same thing. At conference, you'll begin by working on developing working papers, which are basically rough drafts of resolutions. As you move into substantive debate, working papers must be submitted to the chairs and distributed to the body for consideration. At this point, they'll be assigned a number and they become draft resolutions. Only after being approved by the body and voting block do they become resolutions. You may also sometimes refer, hear these referred to as resos as well. And finally, amendments. As you discuss resolutions at conference, you'll discover that many are imperfect and you'll want to change them. To do this, you submit amendments. We'll look at amendments and resolutions in closer detail in a future video, but for now, you're familiar with most of the vocabulary used at Model UN conferences, and you should be ready to jump into debate. Good luck.